Greetings, YouTube. Before we were married, my wife lived briefly in Sanford, Maine. She was a reporter and lived there outside New Hampshire because that was closer to her job. It was the first real reporting job she had after graduating from college. In fact, it was in Sanford, Maine that my wife asked me to get married on my birthday. So I have some fairly fond memories of Sanford, Maine. It's a very small town, the quintessential one-horse town. You can walk the entire main strip, downtown Sanford, there and back in 45 minutes. I know, I've done it. But there was a certain quaint charm about it. It was a broke town, the people there weren't wealthy, and there were a whole lot of teenage girls with kids. Education wasn't high, there weren't a lot of opportunities, and as someone I once met who grew up there said, the only thing you could do was drink, fight, or fornicate. But still, there was a certain charm about it, and I have very fond memories of Sanford, Maine, and going up there every other weekend to visit my then-girlfriend. But at the moment, I'm having a really hard time mustering up any positive thoughts about Maine, because yesterday, the voters in Maine decided to support and endorse a worldview based on prejudice and bigotry. I am still a firm believer in the fact that equality rights should not be left up to people to vote, that these kind of things should be decided by the courts, because it is the court's job to defend the minor minority from the oppression of the majority. Because I wonder, would we have ever had an equal rights movement the civil rights movement that helped minorities, racial minorities in America to achieve equality, would that have worked if it was just voted on? Or would there still be states where it would be illegal, where black people wouldn't be, have any kind of the rights they had in other places? The reality is, is that courts help minorities in the face of majorities that are trying to oppress them. In 1967, the Loving versus Virginia case is my favorite example. The court decided that marriage is a right, and you can't discriminate someone just because they are from two different ethnic groups. You can change the wording of that decision ever so slightly, and you could apply it to anyone who wants to have equality for their marriage. And I can't imagine how anyone reading the Loving v. Virginia decision can't see how it directly relates to same-sex marriage. Marriage has been decreed a right in America, and telling certain people that they cannot get married is a violation, a violation of that. It is unconstitutional. The fact that we keep allowing Americans, who seem to be ignorant of these facts, vote on these kind of things amazes me and appalls me. And the fact that there are large organizations that are helping to fund these bigoted propositions appalls me even more. I'm having a really hard time this morning not getting depressed about this. But for me, depression isn't something I take lightly. Because for me, I've got clinical depression. And when I go down, I go down for a while. So I'm trying really hard not to do that. I'm trying really hard to keep a positive attitude. I remember all the people in Maine who fought against this proposition. And I know that they're going to keep fighting. And I know that I'm going to keep fighting. And I'm going to keep talking to this camera and telling people not to endorse a worldview that's based on prejudice and bigotry. To endorse a worldview that represents equality under the law for all Americans. But right now, the fight seems hard. Right now, facing this loss for equality, it's not easy to see the sunshine. But I gotta keep looking. I have to keep hoping that it'll come back. And that someday, we will look back upon this time period, shake our heads, and say, How were we ever so silly? <laughs>